Yeah. Okay. So first of all, apologies for not being there in a more uh, physical form. Just run into some troubles on the way to Kiev. So hopefully that will that will be a, a good uh, alternative. So my name is uh, Michał Kramarczyk. I'm uh, come from Krakow, Poland, and I'm of the one of the uh, uh, software engineers at uh, Shadow Robot Company. Um, sorry, one second. Let me just figure this out. Yeah. Um, so I've been with the company for just about two uh, two years now. Um, so um, just quickly, what I'm about to talk today. So just going to give a quick overview about the Shadow Robot Company, what we're about, uh, what what we're focusing on. Uh, then I'm going to move on to talking about the Chela Operation Project. We've been involved for quite some time now. Um, and finally, I'm, I'm just going to give a brief overview about uh, some other things that we are currently involved in. Uh, so uh, Shadow Robot Company one of the oldest currently uh, robotic uh, robotic companies in the UK. They actually started uh, over started off over 20 years ago. So uh, yeah, embarrassingly enough, I was just starting my primary school when those guys began began to building began building robots. So that's quite uh, humbling in itself. Um, and they've been basically involved in uh, a lot of Uni Innovate UK and European projects throughout uh, throughout the old days, their history. Basically, 20 years of experience in this uh, in this area. Uh, they started off working on actually bipedal ro robots, so uh, so they wanted to 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 just go uh, go ahead and build the first uh, walking robot. But just about when they were focusing on that, the uh, the world famous Asimo robot came out, which Basically, just outruns them in, in most of the ways. So they, they figure out they should uh, actually move move along and try to find uh, an alternative niche in the robotic uh, industry where they could actually fit in and, and create something uh, innovative. So they moved on to uh, robotic manipulation and basically hands because there were not really not a lot of if any hands that would uh, would uh, be similar to anthropomorphic human hands. So it ended up. Uh, in, in them creating the Shadow Dexter's Hand, which is uh, which is the flag product currently, the most uh, most known product of Shadow, uh, Shadow Robot Company, which is basically a hand that has human kinematics, uh, 20 degrees of freedom. It is human sized. It's actually, when they were designing it, they uh, they measured one of the engineer's uh, fingers and, and palm, and they just used them to, to create the actual hand. Uh, has a lot of sensing built embedded into the hand. There's all, all, uh, over 120 sensors. Um, it is based currently on the open platform, so it's all running on ROS. And <clears throat> actually, all the models uh, and the code itself, controllers, um, model parsing, etc., is all open source. It can be found on our GitHub. Uh, there's also uh, embedded option to use the biotech sensors. I'm going to talk about those a bit later, but they're the one of the most uh, uh, cutting edge uh, sensor sensor technology that uh, uh, that can be found in the market right now. Uh, so the the, uh, the company has grown quite a bit just in the last uh, last two years and uh, started off with London. Now we have offices in uh, London, Bristol, and Madrid. And uh, we also have quite a few uh, remote engineers working in London, Madrid, uh, Budapest, San Sebastian, uh, Bogota, Manchester, Lviv, and, and Krakow. So we're kind of spread uh, quite all over right now. And uh, basically, current, the, the biggest goal of the company is just becoming the best in, in the grasping and manipulation, hence the quite a bit of... Uh, uh, quite a bit of push to, to just work on hands and uh, sensing uh, hapt haptic feedback and a lot of things just connected to, to grasping mind manipulation. So the full operation project we've been involved is uh, involved in uh, recently. <clears throat> uh, we uh, so, uh, we cooperate with two other companies. Uh, one is uh, Syntouch in California. Uh, those are the guys that, that create the biotech sensors. Uh, I'm going to talk about it in a second. And the Haptics uh, startup company, also based in California, which uh, created the haptic feedback uh, glove. So 
just a bit of an overview of what the system is. On the right side, you can see hopefully moving GIF of, uh, of how the system looks like uh, and what the idea is. So you can see a gentleman here wearing their haptics glove. There's a robot uh, right here. I'm going to talk about a bit more in detail about it in a second. And uh, basically, he's teleoperating to to uh, do certain tasks in the in the uh, workspace of the robot. So just a few words about the biotax sensors. Uh, they're actually not uh, produced by us; they're produced by Synthetech, but we've been using them for quite a quite a while now. So uh, they have. Uh, few options of, uh, of uh, sensing. They do sense force, uh, vibration and temperature. Um, in terms of sensing the force, they have two different different types of sensors. One is the uh, fluid pressure sensor, which did just uh, detects delicate touch. touch. And there, there are uh, several electrodes all around the sensor, which in actually detect not only the binary yes, no sensing uh, touch of sense, but also can actually tell you where exactly on the on the sensor uh, the touch has been detected so you can you can move around the the end the tip of the finger and actually exactly know uh, where where the where the sensor is touched uh, in terms of the haptics glove that the haptics company created uh, it's very cutting edge technology as well they uh, provided tactile feedback um, so basically the um, the data from the biotax is translated back into the into the hand, and they're using a um, pneumatic actuators to uh, to uh, create a, a sensation of touch throughout the whole glove, which is mapped to the glove. So it's quite incredible, actually, when you uh, when you wear it and you grab a grab a ball with the robot, you can actually feel it on your own fingertips. Uh, they also have a force feedback, which um, comes down to having a tendon. So uh, whenever a torque on the fingers is felt through uh, or created, the tendon snap, actually uh, not allowing user to close the hands more. So you can actually have more immersive uh, experience of, of grasping something. And they also have a some millimeter motion tracking, which is um, done by uh, Magnetic, techno magnetic tracking technology, and this is how we actually send back data back to the hands to uh, to grasp objects and, and mimic the hand or rather operator's movement through the robot itself. Uh, so just to give a give a bit of a glimpse on how the how the how all the components uh, components connect together. So we have a our shadow hand and UR10 universal robot uh, version 10. On uh, on the side, uh, the shadow robot hand has the uh, biotech sensors on it. Data from those sensors is uh, sent back to the glove to create the haptic feedback. Then the uh, the positioning of the fingertips of the data of the glove is sent back to the hand itself uh, to uh, mimic users. Uh, users uh, movements of the fingers back to the hand and in terms of uh, navigating the arm itself and, and putting the hand to, to uh, correct positions we have a um, htc tracker htc vive tracker on the wrist of the glove which uh, gives you the uh, the six degrees of freedom through the positioning of uh, of the tracker or, or of the frame in the space which we translate back to the uh, wrist of the arm hence uh, being able to to navigate through the uh, through the uh, space and, and getting the getting the system to the places that we want it to uh, so just a, just a bit of a word on how we actually tested the system to be teleoperative because when you're sitting just next to the robot it's not as much as teleoperation as, as you would want to uh, so what we did, we actually had our robot, so UR10 and the uh, Shadow Hand, back in London, and then uh, in California, uh, the haptics guys had their glove and the the motion tracking, so the HTC Vive, and through uh, through internet, through 4G network, uh, we were exchanging the the data over ROS. So actually, uh, the guys navigating the the glove and moving the tracker. Uh, back 
over the over the ocean back in, in Canada, they could uh, they could move the robot in real re real time uh, in London and actually do some some grasping manipulation tasks uh, just using the two uh, D uh, vision. We have not just yet degraded the three D vision, so we are not using the headset of the Vive to feedback the. Uh, the, the the scene in in 3D uh, to the um, to the uh, operator, which is quite uh, annoying at the times because we are actually using 2D, 2D 2D vision in different angles to to try to uh, navigate through the space and actually it kind of reminds uh, uh, the person how much we are as humans rely on on uh, 3D vision to actually be able to grasp objects and it's not quite that easy but it gets way way better with practice. Uh, and we did uh, the same uh, experiment uh, from Tokyo uh, in Japan as well, where the users had the uh, the robotic hand on site, and we were feeding the data back over ROS to London. And uh, we actually, uh, with with good conditions and uh, and um, basically powerful internet, we were able to feed the data. Uh, Quicker than the video itself, so so the latency was actually very very good, and uh, it was quite easy to operate the, uh, the the whole system, even though the distances were so uh, so large. So uh, in here, we, on the left hand side, you can see the the demo demonstration that we had, uh, one of the demonstrations we had in Japan. So you could actually see the uh, the gentleman here typing on the uh, keyboard. So typical hello world uh, using the, the whole system. So what we're really excited about is, is to our, our knowledge, uh, actually the first time ever anyone's typed uh, where it's using a, a robotic hand uh, from distance. This actually, well, in this case, this is not a from distance, but we have done it uh, also in, tele in, in tele teleoperation wise through uh, from California. Uh, and it's definitely the first time anyone's been able to feel what would that they tap through a robot. So having a actual feedback, haptic feedback in this case, every time you touch the button, you actually know it on your own fingertips. Uh, another demonstration we had was actually a wired magazine uh, coming over to, to shadow, or rather coming over to haptics in California, where the, uh, the journalist uh, himself put the glove uh, on, on his uh, his uh, hand and was able to do a lot of uh, specific tasks back in at our office in London. Um, so you can actually see here he's having using the 2D vision uh, to to try to navigate the the uh, the robot around the workspace and, and to pick up the objects. And another quite uh, quite satisfying thing about the whole system is that. It, the mapping of the movements is so natural that uh, someone who has basically zero experience with using the system can actually go ahead, just put the glove on, and with literally few minutes of practice can actually do do fairly um, uh, fairly sophisticated tasks that uh, not many, if any, systems can actually perform right now with uh, with very very experienced operators. So that's another thing that that uh, the the natural mapping of the movements is is uh, precise enough for to just create kind of a natural 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 um, mapping of of uh, what a human wants to do. Um, so just talking a bit about the use cases of, of the whole whole system and why we're so invested in that and, and why we think it's it's uh, it's a big thing to uh, to uh, Develop this further. So, the first thing that comes to mind, which is very obvious, is just that jobs where uh, there are just risky to the person doing them. So, we've been in, in touch with, pardon me, been in touch with uh, quite a few uh, nuclear market uh, players right now, where obviously radiation is nothing you want to be around for too long. So hence the uh, the uh, option to just teleoperate the dangerous tasks and and uh, stay away from from places that you have no um, no desire to be around. Same goes to bomb disposals, uh, construction sites that are dangerous, and even uh, as far as space exploration and and jobs uh, in, in in outer space. Second thing is. Uh, a, well, it's in jobs where the 
person is a risk to the jobs. So this comes down to, for example, something like manufacturer pharmaceuticals, where basically human can contaminate the pharmaceuticals themselves, but you still need humans to perform the uh, dexterous task and, and uh, they, you require them to, to be skilled in some manipulation steps that automated robotics are just not that good at. And, and finally, uh, it's uh, more of a just fun thing with just creating immersive experience, so immersive robotic technology uh, that people could use. Uh, so basically creating a personalized immersive travel experience, for example, for, for visiting destinations in, in other places and, and uh, other parts of the world where uh, people just uh, cannot easily access. <clears throat> So in terms of future development, uh, there's, uh, as in any robotic systems, there's a lot, a lot to uh, to uh, further in this uh, in this in this area. So first thing we want to improve, even though it's it's uh, actually quite usable at the moment, but still want to uh, lower the latency of communications. This is quite a uh, Quite a trick because there's there's uh, there's a few just limitations of the of the technology that we have at the moment, but uh, there's definitely a lot of room for improvement here that we are uh, basically just just actively working on to to remove that delay uh, of of operating, Spe especially um, it's subject to to uh, just bad internet connections. We just had a, a conference right now um, in in Canada where. Basically, at the side of the uh, conference, a lot of people were just using their their Wi-Fi, their their um, wireless connections, and the, the lag was was getting quite annoying in, in a way where you could you, you actually had to wait up to like five seconds to to uh, move the hand back to the to the uh, to the user. Uh, oh, by the way, in this case, we also have integrated the system is one thing I didn't mention. Uh, apart, aside from the haptics glove the, that is that is uh, provides the, the haptic feedback and and uh, sense of touch, we also uh, have integrated the system the the more um, more simple the cyber glove that just allows the user to translate the uh, the movement of the hand to the robot but doesn't provide any any uh, sense of touch. Uh, in this case, but so this is the one we use in, in this case, and uh, again, there are some limitations to uh, to uh, how easy or how, like to the light latency. So that's definitely something that uh, we are we are uh, actively trying to to just make better right now. Um, another thing is the immersive immersive vision system and remote viewing. That's uh, that's something I just briefly mentioned before, but this is very important for for actual tool operation stuff uh, tasks because uh, as I said, we kind of take for granted how much we actually rely on on uh, <clears throat> on our three D vision and and our incredibly complex neural networks uh, in, in our heads to, <clears throat> to actually grasp objects and, and reach them correctly and, and, and grab them in, in the correct orientations. So this is something that you can actually feel yourself when you're trying to um, to move the object that has some quite of some, like a bit of latency and try to move it using just two division. Uh, it's uh, it's not that easy and uh, hence we, we really would try to and 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 uh, hopefully soon we will move on to uh, actually feeding a 3D data from cameras back to the uh, Vive headset, uh, allowing the user to actually see around the workspace and navigate to the uh, to the objects more reliably and more naturally. That would definitely improve the the whole um, whole uh, like natural aspect of, of of working with the with the uh, with the specific tasks in hand. Uh, another thing is is using different arms for specific tasks. There are many types of manipulators on the market right now that uh, just fit better for very specific uh, specific tasks. Uh, we have uh, worked with different manipulators in, in the past. For example, one of the projects we've been using a snake arm, um, if, if you just go ahead and Google it. Uh, you should you should be able to to um, to check some 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 videos on on the internet. 
but basically it comes down to what is the best robot for for specific scenario and adjusting it to the system to uh, to create more reliable systems for a system for a specific task uh, then there's a option to add a maneuverable mobile structure this comes down to things like uh, bomb uh, situation, bomb, bombing scenarios, like bomb, bomb defusal scenarios or or uh, radioactive uh, environment scenarios where you actually have to uh, run the robot or drive the robot to the place before you actually can can start the, the task in hand. Uh, so basically putting a robot on a mobile uh, platform is something that we're definitely looking uh, into for the future to just create something that can be used more in the real life scenarios uh, where where humans should stay away from. Uh, later, we have the option to uh, provide a ground force feedback, and that's basically trying to um, trying to feedback the uh, force sensing from the arm back to the user uh, himself. So right now we have with the the haptics glove, we have the option to feedback data back. Uh, from the hand, but we don't do that for the arm right now. So that would just further the the immersion of the experience to to feel uh, feel the force feedback from the arm to the to the human's arm as well. Uh, the next thing we were, we were uh, collision handling and many other among enemy many other things, but in this case we're just basically using it to uh, handle collisions and just make sure that we know where the objects are. We know not to go through them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so uh, what we did is I'm going to talk about in a second is the, our autonomous grasping pipe that we implemented and we integrated that back to the, to the system as well in this case. Uh, so in in the GIF you can see it actually in action when uh, we are telling the robot we use our mock vision system where we tell the robot where the objects are and it goes ahead and uh, picks the right way to actually uh, go grasp them in specific order and put them inside of the tote on the right hand side here. Um, next project we've been working on is uh, motion planning benchmarking. So quite a bit of uh, hassle in robotics is, is creating uh, a, uh, or rather is, is the planning task where you want to tell the robot to go to a specific place. But there are different ways to get there. Some of them are better, some of them are worse, some of them are very hard for some of the engines, uh, and they actually fail to do them. So what we did was uh, was we created a uh, benchmarking system where you could actually create a different scenes and different queries for the uh, robots to go to. Um, and uh, hence, we uh, use specific number or rather different benchmarks to actually go ahead and uh, and test which which uh, planning algorithms are better than others, and, and allows us to tell which one we should we should use for specific scenarios. Um, so uh, here you can see our visualization tool, where we actually uh, have different benchmarks. So on the, the bottom, you just see some planners that we are testing. And there are different scenarios in which we were testing them, or different. Um, uh, aspects we're testing them for, so time, uh, quality of the plans, correctness or number of soft plans, and hence we can actually tell that some of the uh, some of the planners are better than others in specific, uh, in specific aspects. Uh, then we have the autonomous grasping platform that we implemented from, from mostly from scratch, and it basically comes down to having a uh, state machine that uh, allows us to have a very high level control over very tedious and uh, and, and low level tasks. So uh, we created a uh, a uh, a system where we can basically just go ahead and say, "Hey, there's an object. I want to I want you to get this object, pick it up, and place it in a specific uh, specific specific place." And uh, the idea here is that below the, the whole complicated uh, system of uh, collision avoidance, planning, uh, object detection, uh, grasping, uh, cho choice of different grasps, we can, we can embed it in a very lightweight uh, uh, UI that, that allows even fairly inexperienced users to, uh, to use the use this pipeline to, to perform uh, complex grasping tasks. Uh, 
for this platform, we also created a um, graphical user interface to allow the users to uh, easily create new graphs for specific objects. So usually what we do is we have a CAD model uh, of, uh, of the object, and then knowing that we and knowing its, or its orientation, we can create a uh, graph for each of the objects. We can visualize them, and then using that data, we can just say, using the, the, the graphing pipeline, we can just go ahead and say, hey, here is this specific object. You know which graph to use, so you just go ahead and look through the, the database that we created, and whenever you feel like you're able to pick it without any collisions and without any problems in the planning, then, then please do that. And uh, and this is just a tool that, that helps us create those graphs very easily and uh, and make them for this large spectrum of different objects. Uh, so in terms of further information about Shadow Robot, uh, you can you can visit uh, some of the sites. I mean, the sites that, that I posted here. So if you just want to learn a bit more about Shadow Robot, uh, go ahead and take a look at our website and our GitHub. Uh, then in terms of teleoperation itself, we have a, uh, a note that describes the system more thoroughly uh, on our site. Uh, there's also the wired, uh, wired story that uh, describes uh, the, the um, experience of the wired journalist that was in California and was, in, he was using the system himself to, uh, to navigate, manipulate the objects uh, over the ocean. It's a very, very interesting piece of journalism. I really, really uh, recommend this one. And uh, finally, if you have any further questions uh, to us as a company, then and please go ahead and, and uh, contact us on, on our email and we'll be happy to, to answer any, any, any questions. Uh, so yeah, that's that's it from my side. And uh, if you guys have any further questions, that I'll be happy to answer them right now. I have one uh, one question: When your robots are going to conquer the world? Uh, sorry, could you repeat that? I couldn't hear that. That <laughs> just quite right. When your company and your robots are going to conquer the world? Well, that's the plan, obviously. Oh, I should have said that. Actually, I'm sorry. Um, no, definitely not, um, unless they do. But that's probably AI taking it. Are you sure you're you control the whole process? Well, sometimes when they actually behave in a way that you don't don't expect them to, you're starting to get a bit worried. But uh, usually it's actually human error. So so hopefully we're not just yet at, the play, <laughs> at this spot where they start you know going ahead and choking us. Um, so yeah. Hopefully that answers, answers the question. Uh, Lubomir, uh, you know this guy. Uh, he made the first speech uh, on our conference and he uh, showed us the red button, stop button actually, uh, on all of their robots. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was asking if uh, your robots, if you are sure uh, you are controlling the whole process since. Uh, oh yeah, you're, you're you're never really sure, but we're yeah. trying to keep them in, in check for now. So I, I guess we'll see about that. Guys, do you have questions? Ah, okay. I have a question about uh, the developer SDK. Do you plan to release it uh, maybe in the nearest future, so everyone can buy and try it uh, in our own project, for example? Again, sorry, could, could you just ask The question is uh, about the developer SDK. Uh, so, uh, can we buy uh, this hand and uh, maybe software or API that we can use to build it into so our API, You're asking about the, any APIs for the tele teleoperation? Yes, uh, teleoperation tele itself. I mean, the REST API, for example, if you are based in the cloud. And the uh, more, more interesting part for me is uh, just to buy this hand and try how it works uh, on my, in my own projects. So this is your okay, question. So I hope I, I just got a chance of that, but hopefully I can I can answer. So the question was basically about the teleoperation SDK and and the different uh, user interfaces that you can you can uh, uh, allow you to to control the system. Is that more or less that? <laughs> Thank yeah, you. thank you. Thanks for that. It's it's really hard to to get through the speakers. Unfortunately, guys, do you have questions? Okay, we have no questions. I hope it's going 
to be. Oh, one more. Okay. <laughs> hey, hopefully I'll, I'll get that one. Hello. Uh, uh, can you tell us uh, approximate uh, amount of money needed to buy this uh, arm and uh, start it working? So the question is about buying the system? So yeah, if, if I want to buy uh, this kind of manipulator uh, right, and, so, and all the stuff uh, needed to work with, uh, maybe some yeah, software, so, etc. Uh, how many? How many money? <laughs> it will cost. Right. So, I don't feel like I'm in place to actually give you the numbers. Uh, <laughs> for that, please feel free to contact us on the side. But in terms of the, the readiness of the system and how how quickly you can get them, the development of the 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 human hand, the child extra hand, is about four months, I believe. So, whenever you uh, you want to actually use it, just you should you probably would wait uh, uh, about like four or five months and you could you could get the system your ten is not our we don't develop it so if if we're uh, deploying the whole system the system as a whole we would uh, we would provide it together with a with the your ten that we buy ourselves and, and embed it in the in with other our, our robotic hand and then we connect everything to a laptop that we set up for you as well we ship this as a, as a whole package in terms of uh, teleoperation this is still very experimental, so we're not just yet uh, selling it as a, as a product as a whole, but this is basically knocking at the doors right now, so hopefully we'll have more uh, specific informations, information for you about this one uh, uh, soon enough. But again, uh, feel free to, to contact us on the, the webpage and, and to, I'm sure the, the management team and the, the business development team can, can actually give you more precise uh, answer. More questions? Yeah. Uh, Michal, I hope uh, that uh, we are going to share your contact, uh, your email or any you would like to, uh, on our website. And uh, I would ask you if you are okay with the uh, guys asking you questions outside of this presentation. Yes, yes, please do. Uh, I'm not sure what the best uh, place would be, but uh, I'm, I will be still available, available on Skype, for example, or on the email, or however else you would want me to, so I'm happy to answer anything anything that, uh, that anyone's curious about. Uh, I missed that one previous question. Uh, again, I just couldn't hear what exactly was going on, so I didn't answer this one. So uh, We if... were asking about the budget, if we can buy your... Uh, yeah, this this one I, I got. I didn't get, didn't get SDK there, but, and so. all about that. I hope your mm, project is going to be, uh, actually uh, all of your projects are going to be available for sale for I don't know half of the year, one one year, and uh, oh. our developers could contribute into such uh, development. Actually, that's that was the main idea of all the questions, right? Okay. All right. So if, if there's anything else, I'm, I'm happy to, to answer them by uh, by email or Skype or however uh, you guys see fit. Um, I'm available the whole day, so so just just go ahead and ping me. Thank you very much for your patience and your time. Thank you. Have a good day, and we are going to continue our conference. Bye. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye.